<laughs> I do not want to drive that kind of wet. I get up and it's raining. Everyone in the whole county comes swarming over. <laughs> Just before we crack on with it, guys, I just want to say 50% of you are actually not subscribed. Uh, I've never really been that guy who chases subscriber number figures, but I really do want to get to that 100,000. I think it'll be a really good milestone to make. Uh, so if you do, if you can just click subscribe, that'd be absolutely amazing. I'd be forever grateful and enjoy the video. Good morning, YouTube. I'm sure your lockdown is all great. At least you've got good weather. At least you can sunbathe, but I haven't been doing that. I've just been sitting on Xbox 24-7. I've gone back to a 13-year-old Lee Lockwood just thinking Xbox is life, which is really not good. So it took me a while to get off my ass and do this video today. But this video was actually suggested by a patron. So thank you to them who's just, who suggested this video. I think it's personally a good idea. Uh, I might upset some people, but fuck it. If you don't know what Patreon is, I'm sure you all do. Uh, the link will be on the screen there. If you want to go over and check it out, see what you get, uh, that'd be amazing. Uh, but yeah, today we're going to be doing the top 10, the top 10 cars that I have driven the most fun cars I've driven. Now this is a personal opinion. Uh, I know this might not be right in your eyes. I know some people you think some some of you might think I'm absolutely stupid. But this is just of my experience with these cars. Uh, it's not a factual thing, it's just what I believe and what I felt on that day. Uh, so there's loads of things to come into it. Obviously some so I'll I'll explain why but some cars I might not have drove to the full limit, some cars might have been bad weather, some cars might have been a bad location, but I'll go past them, I'm going to go through all of them. Now, this isn't just the 10 ones I like, these are the top 10. Uh, so this was really hard to try, and, to try to number these, especially when I started getting up into the top 6. Really difficult for me to do that, I'll explain when I get into them. Uh, and these are excluding my mine cannot be in this list, these are other people's cars, and I've tried to get them mostly for reviews just so you can also experience that with me and if you haven't you can go and experience those videos so yeah like, nonetheless let's jump into it the number 10 is the mazda mps the black one i think it was around about 430 horsepower it was it, had, it was meth injected you know big turbo and that was a fun car that was probably i think my second or third car review and that literally blew my breath away that the MPS is known to having so much torque today. So, you know, when you put, when you almost double that horsepower, that torque steer was amazing. I'll insert some clips of, of my first experience with that. And wow, was that car fun. That was probably the most fun car I've ever driven for about a year or so. Like, literally not much came to that. That was just so powerful, so smooth. And, and but, but then again, it had that frightening torque steer. enjoyed that review what i remember that perception being was when i only had driven a few cars so if i'd driven it now it probably wouldn't have been that much of a shock the mazda mps the 430 brake horsepower mazda mps is in 10th now number nine number nine is adam ivel's m3 the e92 m3 i'm not sure if adam's going to be annoyed that it's so low or he's going to be surprised that it's on there because uh, everyone knows i'm not a bmw guy um, now it's it's low down there for a couple of reasons. He absolutely loves and adores that car and he was really scared to let me drive it. I think I was, I'm the only person who's the only guy who's driven that car. But Adam doesn't know I have actually drove an M3 like this. And Adam also doesn't know that I almost crashed it on track. Great. <laughs> cool. I didn't, I didn't crash it. <laughs> it was wet and like like it is now yeah like it is now great so, cool so i was really worried about you know crashing it so i really didn't drive it to its full potential uh, but the only reason it's on this list is because adam did drive it to potential and although it's everything i go against bmws german cars naturally aspirated uh in a driving sense, that felt great. Um, you know, it, it had just the right amount of power for the roads, rear wheel drive, the gearbox was great. 
uh, beautiful looking car as well and it sounded great as well so that is on number nine an m3 an na german car is on the top 10 list sadly you just grab on i'm a terrible passenger mate. now this one is going to shock everybody in number eight is the thousand horsepower supra that's at number eight <laughs> And the reason why it's at number eight is because on the leading up to it, I was told it was a thousand horsepower. So um, obviously when you big yourself up for about a week or two driving a rear wheel drive thousand horsepower Supra, it's going to frighten you and you're going to get built up. Like you're just going to get some sort of sort of anxiety. And when I got there, I got told it was on a low map. So it was around about 700 horsepower. So when you've built yourself up for a week or two expecting a thousand horsepower rear wheel drive Supra and you get there and it's 700, it was kind of underwhelming. Uh, it, don't get me wrong, it was a fast car and it was fun to drive. That's why it's in the top 10 because it's, it's, it's a Supra, dude. <laughs> Just, it was just very safe like the boost came in really really nice and linear there was no it was wasn't kicky at all it had a big wing on the back so it kept it down so it weren't skitty all the place it was just it, safe to drive it wasn't really frightening in any way so once i've built up a week or two of like yeah, i'm gonna fucking kill myself and when i finally get in this car and it's quite safe and not as fast as i expected it kind of dumbs your, your perception on it. So that's why it's at number eight. But nonetheless, what a beautiful car. Sounds amazing. And it was great to drive. And I know a lot of money's been spent on it. And, it's, and it was lush. I loved driving it. I was just a little bit underwhelmed. So that's why it's on number eight. <laughs> now this is where it got really hard. Uh, I kind of knew one, two, three, and four, but five, six, and seven was the hardest. The only way I could do it was when I was sat in there, when I, I was sat in the back garden thinking of which one to do, and I just said, if someone came, if the, all three cars were outside now, which one would you take for a drive? That's how I uh, determined it. So number seven, is a Mark 6 Fiesta ST, the 411 brake Mark 6 supercharged ST, Dave from Greenlight. That car was f fun. That car was so much fun. Oh my god, I literally had a ball in that. All I can say is, this does not drive like a supercharger. It's dry. If someone put me in this car, I would not say it's supercharged. I would say it's got a fat turbo strap to it. The only reason it's a little bit lower is because when I took it out, it was wet. It was totally raining, and it, and it was it came on boost so late. It was literally like a big turbo. I guess then they had it mapped to come on boost late. Um, came on boost so late, so it came on boost when you was at like five grand, <laughs> and that boost just bah, and it just slipped all over the road. Don't get it wrong, it was crazy amount of fun. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Yeah, we're just wheel spinning in the minute. <laughs> just, wheel, just wheel spinning in third. Absolutely crazy amount of fun. But that's why it's uh, it's down a little bit. And I've had my share of Mark 6 Fiesta STs. Obviously, I had one for around about a year. So it wasn't a new experience to me. You know, the, the power was a new experience, but the driving feel inside of the interior, it just wasn't a new experience. My God, was that car fast. When you've got 400 brake going through a small car like that, holy sh shit, it was fast. And another thing, Dave, that was his absolute baby and he'd never let anyone drive it. So there's another thing in my head that I didn't really want to push it to its limits just because, you know, these people, if I break something or anything, it's going to be the worst thing in the world. So experience wise, number seven. So we're getting harder and harder. So remember, these are the next two of the hardest. Now, number six is the Mark 1 Golf. I am also surprised why it's so low down. I thought it'd be at the top. But when I go back to how much fun I actually had driving it, uh, the the golf does come a little bit lower, but I've got it. I've got to put everything in, you know, driving speed, how much it frightens me, whole experience, like uh, ticking off a bucket list. You know what I mean? Everything comes into it, and that's number six. Uh, that was literally one of the funniest days of my life taking that Mark One Golf out. We had it for about four or five hours. Just literally had it off for most of the day. And it was hilarious. Like as soon as we started up, the battery died, and we had to have to jump it from the back. 
Oh wait, it stalled. <laughs> How did you do that? <laughs> oh, oh no. Oh no, guys. Wait, I think the back. Okay, it's got. Wait, we need to jump start it. Woohoo! And, <laughs> and when we got in the petrol station, it, 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 it was trying to start it up with the choke and. Yes, we got it! <laughs> it was just so much fun. The whole experience of, a, of an old classic car like that was amazing. Now, if you all don't know, it was a Mark 1 Golf. It had a Mark 3 GTI engine in it. I think it was like 200 horsepower. So when you got 200 horsepower for a really old Mark 1 tin, it had, it literally had like no power steering, uh, no like assisted brakes, uh, it had no rev limiter, so you, you had to make sure you didn't rev over seven grand because the car would just rev till it blew up. Oh, it went to seven grand then, sorry Neil. So all those are just a great experience and it was just this little thing going around the road and everyone loved it and it was beautiful and everyone was like waving and the horn sounded cool and the car was just funny and it was a great experience. That was one of the funniest days of my life taking that car and the weather was beautiful and I was in Essex so it was going around this reservoir. It was a great day, great car um, but it does fall down a little bit. Now number five is the car which has shocked me the most. Like it's up there. It was literally one of the best cars I've ever driven. It was a Mark One Focus RS. It was unbelievable. I didn't really know the guy that well. He was like, "Yeah, I've got a Mark One Focus. It was it's really clean. Uh, Give me the keys. I just went out for as long long as I, I could." And that car was just amazing. I literally can't give it another word. The whole car in general just feels absolutely awesome it genuinely feels like one of the most put together cars i've ever driven super clean it even had like the the original pen the focus rs pen that you got it had that in the dash it had the original mats and and, and everything was just super clean the original radio super clean focus rs and the way that drove like that literally the way i, I explained it that that car it perfectly got new technology with an old school feel. That mix was absolutely perfect. Like I've drove all three of the Focus RS's and they all have the positives and negatives, but in overall, I would take a Mark 1 any day. It was just so light, nimble, like the, like the old steering wheel as well. When I first get in, I thought, oh God. But then like it just worked so well, like with the old sort of 90s steering wheel and it felt unbelievable it was just so tight nimble quick quick on boost no sort of weight transfer from the back or anything it was amazing i absolutely loved that i actually stayed out in that car for as long as i could because it was just so much fun so that's why it comes in at number five here we go the top four the big boys the big boys the big boys now number four is the ferrari 458 <laughs> Will's Ferrari 458. Now, another thing is experience. It's so high because it's my first Ferrari I've ever driven. And, you know, me and Will picked it up from the from the dealer when he got it. Will, the guy who we own True Rally with, True Rally is the rally company that we own. It's the car holiday. This is how much of a sound guy is. He picks it up, we go straight to a place, and he lets me do a review in it. I drove it longer on that first day than he did, his new Ferrari. Ferrari 458 Italia. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful car. Will, as soon as he comes out of the dealership, gets it sideways, he's just such a sick guy. And I'm like, holy, because I'm watching this, I'm in my little diesel Audi behind, I'm just watching him go, bah, bah, bah. I'm like, oh my God, I'm driving that in a few minutes. I got in this Ferrari, and the Ferrari 458 is so raw. And it was piss wet through. Mate, I, I don't know how I controlled that for not slipping out. There was multiple occasions where it was just, come on, because obviously being NA, it just bang, power straight away, no matter what rev you're at, it just all over the place. <laughs> Very kicky, isn't it? Jesus Christ. Um, but it's, it's lower because personally, I feel like the other cars gave more experience and it was so wet on that day that we couldn't even really give the car that much of a run. As soon as you floored it, it just went sidewards. Uh, we was in like the city center of Leeds. <laughs> We didn't have any good roads around to, tr to properly drive it. And I'm glad we didn't because the weather was just so 
awful. Uh, but it's a Ferrari and it's a beautiful Ferrari, an iconic Ferrari, so that's why it's at number four. Now the top three. The top three. Number three is Will again. It is Will's Lamborghini Huracan Performante. Now, a lot of though, a lot of you guys know that I'm not a supercar supercar guy, and I'm not a supercar guy. This is why it's at number three. Uh, I'm not a supercar guy, but you cannot deny the feeling of driving a Lamborghini, sitting in a Lamborghini, people looking at you in a Lamborghini, the gearbox of a Lamborghini, the engine sound of a Lamborghini, it's just an experience. It is a total, total, total experience. The only reason it's lower is because it takes away that sense of speed. It's all-wheel drive, you're quite surrounded by safety. Like, I actually remember, I, I was going around the corner, and I was like, must be going about 40 mile an hour here. I'm not gonna say how fast it was, uh, but it was fast. It was very fast. Um, and I was just like, holy shit, this literally can go around a corner. And it was, it, it was just so well engineered and so well built. It kind of distracted you from the driving a little bit. It was just so good to drive. Oh, you're going from first gear. First? Yeah. Slow right up. Yeah? Yeah, go on in. Oh my god. Go right up to it, like, right to it. Kicking off them, it? Yeah. Like, I actually remember you kind of forgot what car you were in some points until you looked in the rear view mirror and it looked like a jet engine. You can see the big air ducts here coming wider than the mirror, wider than the car, and the car's just so wide at the back. The, oh, it's and it was just like, oh my god, this is Lamborghini. And another reason that I didn't drive it properly because this is the first time I'd ever met Will. It was that's quite a funny story. He messaged me on Instagram and it just this is how this is what Will's like. I got a message on Instagram and he said, Hi mate, watch your videos, I've got a cool car if you want to review it. And that's just like something like, oh, what, what's he got? You know, you, you just see it in your message request. And I just, I, look, I just took it down and said, yeah, what is it? And he goes, oh, it's a Lamborghini Huracan. I was like, no, no, it's not. I, I didn't even believe him at first. Because he didn't, he didn't have, they had any picture, he had like one picture on his Instagram. So I was just like, fuck, oh, yeah. So he drove all the way to Grimsby, met up with Will, that legend of a guy, give me the keys to his fucking Lamborghini Huracan. Oh, shit, it needs to be like... Just randomly, it was just amazing. It's kind of a bit of a blur. I'm so lucky I have YouTube so I can film, film things like this. But that's just like, I've done two things um, that just most people dream of doing in their lives. Driving a Lamborghini Huracan and driving a Ferrari uh, 458. That's why they're up there with three and four. So I'm sure you're all biting your fingers to see which is two and one and which cars are actually left. Number two. Uh, Alex is going to be mega impressed with this, I can already tell. Number two is the S14, the Kuki S14 that I drove a couple of weeks ago. That is number two. That is just me all over. Now, it takes a lot for a car to impress me at this stage and now when I've drove so many cars. It takes a lot to frighten me at this stage when I've drove so many cars. And it takes a lot for a car to stick in my memory when I've drove this many cars. This car did all three. <laughs> There was at least three or four times that I almost died in that car. I'm gonna tell you now because I made it back safely. Safely. It had a it had a two way LSD in. It was fucking welded. It wasn't welded, but it there it may as well have been welded. And it did this thing. It was fine. It slipped traction, but it weren't all over the place. But as soon as you went into second gear and it lost traction in second, it just flipped out. I was and the and it was terrible weather. It was raining. It was hailing. Then it was then it stopped. So you had, it, it, so you had the perception of it's not raining but the road was still wet and it started raining and it was hailing oh my god it was the worst time to be driving a car like that it was literally like there was two seats in this car fully stripped out they had the other door cards in uh fully stripped out cage around you four five point harness oh and in the wet in this s14 which was slammed full fiberglass body kit welded diff bigger turbo uh, oh it was just 
such a fun experience trying to count that. And that is literally me all over. Japanese, rear wheel drive, like just so unique cars that just make tons of rattles and noise. It with That car, it was actually easier just to clutch kick and spin it around than trying to do a turn because the diff was just like, gung, 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 gung. Trying to get it in reverse, gung, gung, gung. It was easy just to put it first, clutch kick, flip it around, uh, which we did do at the start of the video. <laughs> Liam was there, Liam was in the car, Liam's a terrible passenger, so he was making it even more funny because he was absolutely shitting himself. Uh, he had to get out and have a fag halfway through, and I felt like I almost had to as well. Great car, perfect amount of power for the road. Absolutely perfect amount of power for the road. Um, and it was in the wet, so I had that experience in the wet. Imagine what it'd been like in the dry, like if I could proper go. Beautiful car, absolutely love it, that's at number two. And last but not least, I was going to do some honourable mentions, but I thought that might not have been a good idea because people who I have drove who weren't even in the honourable mentions, they might have pissed off. But don't get me wrong, I've enjoyed all the cars I've driven. I just have to narrow it down to a top 10, so I'm not going to do the honourable mentions. Uh, but number one, I'm sure you would have all guessed, is Dan's 600 near enough horsepower Evo 6. I <laughs> talk about this car because this car literally changed my life like it changed my life i remember i had my subaru and i'm not sure where i met dan i i know okay so this is this is another funny thing about the story this is the story of how i did the review on this evo and why it got me to get my evo i've always wanted an evo i'll get into the story so i was a uh, a car event. This guy comes up to me and says, Oh, hi, Lee. Uh, I watch all your stuff. I've got an Evo. That's all he said. I have an Evo. Those were his words. And I was like, Oh, is it here? Let me go have a look at it. He was like, No, no, it's in the garage getting some work done. I was like, Okay, no worries. Next event, a few months later, he comes up to me. The same thing. Oh, hi, Lee. Hi, mate. Is your Evo here? No, no, it's in the garage. Well, okay. Conversation bar. Comes up to me again at another event a few months later. Hi, Lee. Oh, hi. Then he's Evo here. No, no, it's still in the garage. At this point, I'm thinking, This guy's not even got an Evo. He's literally just like, He's just lying because he knew from the video. Videos that I loved Evos. I was like, this guy's lying, he doesn't even have one. Anyway, a few months later, we was at a car meet around the corner from my house, okay? I didn't even know Dan lived close to me. Dan comes up to me, I'm at this car meet in Wigan, and he comes up to me and goes, Look, the Evo's here. I'm like, all oh, right, cool, we'll go and see this Evo. Walk over to this Evo, me thinking it's just a standard Evo, and I'm like, I look at it, and he's got a dyno print in the window, which is like 600 horsepower. I'm like, Oh my god, Dan. I was like, Dan, I didn't know it was 600 horsepower. He's like, oh yeah, yeah, it's, you know, it's 2.3, fully rebuilt, blah, 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 I'm like, Jesus Christ. He goes, oh, I'll do, I'll do a launch control. I was like, go on then. Then this happened. This, this is the first experience of me ever hearing this car. Insert video now. <laughs> Everyone in the whole car meet comes swarming over to this Evo. Dad's like, do you want to come out there? I'm like, yes. So I get in this Evo with this guy that I barely even know. It was pissing it down. He had semi-slicks on. Come out this car meet, first gear. Bah, bah. Jesus. Oh my God. <laughs> oh my God, that's fast. Jesus. Literally going around this corner in the wet in semi slicks. I've never ever ever been that shook and that frightened and that lost for words. It was just frightening. I actually felt my face go this thin. Now in Evos, if you've never driven an Evo or if you never if you don't know anyone who's ever who's had an Evo. Always add 50 to 100 horsepower to the figure. That's what it feels like. And people got in my Evo and I said, oh, it's just under 400. They was like, no. People, they have this perception of making it feel even quicker than it is. The gearbox, the ratios are so short and everything's just so snappy. This is why they're terrible dailies. 
they're just so snappy and they give you this perception of speed. That's in an 8 and a 9. This was an Evo 6. This was from like 90, late 90s. This was a Tommy Mackinnon one as well, so it was super rare. I actually felt like I was going faster than the speed of sound in that car. It was fucking terrifying. So the next thing he pulls on, he goes, do you want to go? And I was like, okay, right, I'll have a go because right now I'm that frightened that I genuinely believe that it can't be that fast. Surely it's a car that just feels frightened in the passenger seat because we all know it's all scarier in the passenger seat. So I get in the driver's seat, turn this car on, first quick gear pull, second gear pull. I was like, take the fucking keys off me. Like, just take them keys off me. I, I need to prepare myself for this and we'll do a review. So we were doing a review the next day. Bearing in mind, I've just come out of a car previously that's frightened the hell out of me in the wet and it was so scary. So, you know, I get everything sorted for the review. I wake up in the morning, I was like, please, please, please don't be wet. I do not want to drive that kind of wet. I get up and it's raining. I'm like, oh, for God, oh, Jesus Christ, for God's sake, really. So, I tried to dance thinking, oh, pray to God it'll start raining. It kept on raining. So I get in this car. Normally I'm quite professional with reviews. I, I get in the car, I drive it slow to here. I'm like, okay, I'll drive it to there. Do the intro, do the in do there, drive around that road, do famous driving, do this there, pull there, pull there, GoPro here, that. I was frightened with this car. I was just like, oh my God. I had to drive it around for an hour before I could even have the balls to start the review because I was that frightened of this car. It was full semi-slicks, all that power, as I said, no boost limit in first, second or anything. Anyway, so I and it, I was driving around, just trying to get used to it, trying to just come on boost a little bit, so just seeing if it if it crab walked or anything. And it started raining more, so I actually got out of the car, went into McDonald's, and just chilled out for about 20 minutes, and just just relaxed, and you know, just relaxed and stuff, and tried to hope the weather was was calm down. And it did. While I was in weather, while I was in McDonald's, it stopped. It stopped raining. So we get back in the car and I'm going to drive up to Rivington, the place where I do a lot of the reviews because it's, it's like nice aesthetic and it's some good roads. Drive up there and I thought, right, I'm going to put my foot down in second gear uh, just to, you know, just to, just to gauge how quick I get to a corner and like braking zones. This car was genuinely that frightening. Uh, so second gear, come on boost. It went sideways. All-wheel drive car Evo, it literally went sideways in the middle of this country. I was like, oh my god, like, this is fucking frightening. So I slowly drive up to the review, and then that's my reaction in the start of the review video. That was genuine. Me going... <laughs> well, that was me genuinely being frightened. It wa Luckily, it warmed up. I have never been in a car which hit you like that. The roads are a little bit dry, so we're going to do a quick pull uphill. Oh my god. Oh. Oh my god. I've been in some faster cars than that on paper, trust me. That thing, the way it felt. Oh, Jesus Christ. What it did was it had that much power go into each wheel. It did this, it crab walked. So it did this thing where it had all the torque going to different wheels. It Each wheel would pull you over. So you'd literally go down the road and you'd be crab walking like this going straight. It, it'd just be going all over the road. It was terrifying. So what's the first thing I think, my mum is the worst passenger in the world. I'm gonna get her in this fucking car. And then that's when the, the video came of uh, tricking my mum into the 600 brake Evo. Uh, and to this day, she still never gets in a fast car with me. Uh, she won't even get in my Audi because she knows it's a three liter diesel. The only car she'll come in with me uh, is hers. Uh, or if she's pissed and she needs to lift home somewhere. From that day, she will never get in a car with me ever again. Uh, and if you've not seen that video, I'll insert a little clip now. Got home and I said, Dan, I need one. I, I, you know how much I want one. I need one now. And he was like, Get one, have a look. So, and at, at that point, I didn't think it was possible for me to own an Evo, but that car literally sparked that fight in me, and I got one. I got one a couple months later, uh, and now yeah, the rest is history with the Evos. Well, that is my top ten list. Hopefully, uh, you all agree. I'm sure some of you would be like, what about this? What about that? But uh, I'm sure you can agree with the uh, the Evo 6 being number one. I think most people have guessed that that Evo 6 was was number one. Uh, and I think Dan is sadly selling that Evo now. Which is a shame because it was such a good car. So yeah, uh, speaking of the mum video, I actually want to do a reacting video with my mum. So if you guys actually want to see that, please comment below. I think that would be quite funny. Yeah, hopefully you all enjoy this video, guys. I hope you all uh, are having a fun time in lockdown. 
Instagram. I'm going to be putting up a lot more Patreon videos. So if you do want to check out Patreon, that would be amazing for me. So thanks for watching, guys. I love you all. I'll see you next time.